castles, a country of castles. That is Ireland, a land still dotted with fortified towers and giant crosses carved in stone by a devout people centuries ago. Today, a city like Cork has a business-like urgency that makes a mockery of all that blarney about leprechauns and little people, which some visitors still like to believe. Just look across at the oil refineries in nearby Cove Harbour, and you see an almost space-age skyline sprouting up. These, you can say, are the castles of the 20th century, today's landmarks of power from a determined nation with a burning desire to make an industrial impression in the world. Foreign capital has been brought in in a big way, and a Dutch firm have found the blueprint for success in their expanding shipyard a few miles from Cork. You can sense the Irish-style celebration when the largest ship ever built here gets a good luck blessing. 30,000 tons nudged down the slipway by the traditional bottle of champagne. And the excitement bubbles over. Ireland isn't out on her own anymore. This sort of international cooperation is launching her on a voyage of prosperity. But the pace might not be as hectic as you find on the massive expanse of Loch Derg. It's one of Europe's top venues for water ski enthusiasts. Whether it's fun or fishing, you can't ignore the Irish afloat. It takes courage for these West Coast fishermen to venture out into the angry waters of the North Atlantic, but the catch often makes it rich business. You can see why continental trawlers take a chance on poaching inside the lawful limits. With this sort of almost guaranteed success, it's one time when foreign intervention just isn't part of a fair deal. Fishing from here at Killy Beggs is exclusively Irish like the legend which surrounds the rugged beauty of Croke Patrick, the holy mountain which is the scene of an annual pilgrimage. From the lower slopes you view the magnificent sweep of west coast grandeur dominated by St. Patrick's statue. If it's real Irish character you're looking for, then Galway has it all laid out on the curbside. A street market is just as much a social occasion as a bring and buy sale for out of town country folk. Donkey work can be tough at times, but there's colour in a street-side flower stall, another intimate corner of a market that sprawls in the shadow of the newly built Galway Cathedral. We are not, as you might think, inside the cathedral. The glittering tributes to Christianity are showpiece creations from a Dublin company who specialise in high altar ornaments. There's inch-perfect precision, right from the drawing board stage to the chasers, who tap out the sacramental patterns in bronze, silver and gold. The eye-catching care as each jewel is set in position is a skill that has been handed down through generations. A monstrance can cost a thousand pounds and take months to complete by a team of 20 experts. This Irish craft is earning a flag-waving success throughout the Christian world, even here at home in the remotest corners of County Limerick, where an old thatched cottage seems centuries away from industrial development. Sadly, though, it's been caught up in economic reality. We're inside the Village Museum at Bunratty Folk Park, created to preserve some of the fast disappearing West Coast cottages. This cosy domestic scene once took place six miles away at Shannon, where a piano factory now stands on the old cottage site and is part of a bold industrial experiment. <laughs> yes,
Yes, this is another West Coast image, a cosmopolitan scheme centered around the Shannon International Airport. The special tax concessions offered here are sweet music in the ears of foreign investors. Now Ireland is really calling the tune in this previously unexploited Western outpost. You can almost regard it as a foreign country on Irish soil because goods produced by American, German and other overseas firms face a stiff customs check when being exported from the airport area into Ireland itself. And that's no yarn spinning story. Mass production never meant much in these parts until the Shannon scheme was launched. Now the pattern for the future development is taking shape, including plans for a super town that will challenge Dublin and Cork. Shannon may one day be Ireland's international city, with the unique status of being almost a country on its own. A city created in the jet age, yet one which will never be without the touch of the green. And you don't need to spell it out for flyaway visitors.